Welcome. Today we're going to talk about conditional formatting. Now conditional formatting is a big concept, probably about as big as any that I can think of. It's not like a particular button or a format. Uh, so this particular feature of Excel is found under the Home tab, which is kind of interesting to me because it's pretty data driven. So conditional formatting is used to give some graphical meaning to your data. More often than not, in an Excel worksheet, you're just looking at a bunch of numbers. And more often than not, you're looking for the high numbers or the low numbers or numbers which fall between a certain range. And you can just read this column and, you know, see what's in there, figure out what's low, what's not. Uh, but one of the cool ways uh, to do this graphically is with conditional formatting. So first thing to know about conditional formatting is it lives here. Um, I can't cover all this in one video, even in a pretty long video. I'm going to focus on these two uh, groups up here. I'm going to say that this is the most powerful part of conditional formatting. Of course, there's managed rules where you can do everything, but let's just not talk about that for now. So you've got highlight cell rules and top bottom rules. So understand this, and this is one of the things that makes conditional formatting a little bit different. Conditional formatting is applied to a range of data such as height, like who's the tallest player, or what's tall, what's not. So I'm going to select this range. I hold down control, shift, down arrow. That grabs me 1,000 rows almost. So once I've selected the range, now I'm going to head over to conditional formatting. And let's say that I want to see the top 10%, right? How tall are those people? Well, you've got highlight cell rules and top bottom rules, and there's quite a few options. If I wanted to see the top 10%, well, there we go, right? Good choice. I click on that, and you can see what's happening. It's red on red because of this set of options right here. If you like green on green, then go ahead. You can create your own style. That's usually a step in the wrong direction. I mean, you're just going to use this to quickly give some graphical meaning to the data. I click OK. And so that is the top 10% of values. You can see it goes all the way up. And it's only applied to the specified range. Really makes those values stand out. Um, let's just apply a couple more, just arbitrary rules here. So I'm going to select weight this time. Control shift down arrow to grab an entire range of data. Uh, let's do conditional formatting. And let's say this time I would like to see... Let's highlight players whose weight is between 190 and 210 pounds. So pretty straightforward options here. That sounds like a between. I already forgot what I said. Uh, maybe I said 190 and 210. At this point, you know I do not have a script. And let's say I want to do yellow on yellow. I go OK. And what does that tell us? I'm I'm not sure, but if you were for some reason interested in how many people fall between that range, it's a pretty quick and easy way to analyze that. Let's do age, because it's the, kind of the last numeric column here. So control shift down to select the range, and so I need to create a rule. So do notice I'm, I'm basically highlighting cells according to a rule, which I'm just kind of winging. And those rules are generally made up of something here. So let's say that I wanted to... Uh, highlight everyone who is below the average range. Pretty cheesy because you can see this is right here. I click OK and this does not look like it worked out very well. But let's uh, click OK and see if it really looks like... I mean it looks like a disaster. Like everyone is highlighted. Is that possibly correct? Yeah, it looks like it is. Now not necessarily half of them because it's more based on a mathematical average. How is this data sorted? That is I don't know, and I don't care, but that's kind of kind of weird that all the young guys are at the bottom. All right, not really the point, but anyways, that is conditional formatting. We've got these down here, and I'll talk about those um, in my next video. But for now, know that this is the answer to most of the conditional formatting questions which you're asked. It should be pretty obvious when you need these guys. These I think of as more of like an inline graph, and they're pretty cool, but... Oftentimes what you want to do if you're trying to make data stand out graphically, it's just picking one of these rules. And of course, notice this more rules down here, which is pretty similar to the kind of things you would do in here. If you ever have to do anything which is outside of the box, which is, you know, I don't know, creating your own rule from scratch, then it's going to be in the dialog box. But really, my best advice would be if you're trying to do some highlighting rules, 
make sure it's not one of these predefined rules because it usually is and we looked at numeric um, rules there are ones for text as well I don't know that there's really much value in creating one but let's do this I'm gonna select the team column let's go to conditional formatting and let's just see how these things change based on that so top bottom doesn't make a whole lot of sense at all but highlight rules we can do things like right a uh, text that contains I don't know how about everything that has an S in it right okay uh, is that worth doing? Probably not, and that's why conditional formatting, like I said in the beginning of the video, is typically applied to numeric data. You can do it for textual data, but only makes so much sense. So that is half of conditional formatting. In my next video, I'll talk about the other half of conditional formatting, which looks cool, but I don't think is quite as useful. Thanks for watching.